Today at Melio, we will show you how we grade log footage to achieve a clean, professional, digital look. First, you must ask what makes up for a visually pleasing digital look. If we take examples from larger feature films and TV shows, we can identify three things. High contrast with deep blacks, sharpness and clean skin tones. And we must clarify that what we think is a good image, you may think otherwise. Therefore, grading is a very subjective matter. However, we still have found that a digital look still falls into these three things. Contrast, sharpness, and clean skin tones. Before a videographer even touches grading, they must ensure that they have shot the footage as well as they can. For example, with Sony A7 S Log 2 footage, the image must be exposed by plus two stops. If it is not, this will make it more difficult to grade in post, giving a more grainy and less sharp image. There will often be times that you're not able to correctly expose for your log profile. This is when we recommend using a less flat profile, for example, in Sony cameras HLG3, which we will also go over towards the end of the video. Hey, my name is Rag, and these are a few of the clips that we're going to go over today. So these three clips here were all shot on S-Log2, while this clip was shot in HLG3. So we're going to start off with this clip. So this is a very high key kind of look. And then we have a more teal and orange kind of look. And then we have a more darker kind of vibe, which was shot during sunrise. And then this, of course, was shot during the night. So we'll start off with this clip and yeah, we'll get straight into it. We're going to press Alt S for a new node. And then we're going to press F2 to rename it. I'm going to call it WB, which stands for white balance. And then we're going to make another clip press F2, I'm going to call it contrast, I'm going to press Alt S and then F2 and then balance, Alt S or Command S if you're on Mac and we're going to put saturation, so F2, sat for saturation. And then I'm just going to move this node tree over to the left so we have a bit more working space. So next what I'm going to do is press Alt S to make serial node and then press Alt L to create a layer mixer. So I'm going to press this twice, so one, two. So we'll go over the layer mixer once we actually get to it for the grade, but essentially it's very much like Photoshop, but instead of the top layer being on the foreground, it's actually the bottom layer, uh, which is kind of confusing at first, but um, it'll make sense. Yeah, we'll do that when we get there, and then we'll just add a few more nodes. So we're going to click on the layer mixer, press Alt S, and we're going to press F2. I'm just going to write global. And then we're just going to press Alt S and this is going to be sharpening. So this first clip is actually used for denoise. Of course, if you have the free version of Resolve, you can't use denoise. Um, but that doesn't matter. We're not going to be using it much anyways in this tutorial. So we're not actually going to start off with white balance. We're going to start off with contrast. Because once you've added contrast and you've added the saturation, then you're able to judge the color a lot better, um, which then you're able to then adjust the white balance. So if you go over to contrast, just come down here to contrast. And then we're just going to drag this up to about there. Maybe a bit too much. Just so those blacks are kind of nice and rich. And one thing people never really seem to be doing and which gives muddy skin tones is not adjust. Pivot. And the pivot is so important and one of my favorite things to use for contrast. So essentially the pivot shows and determines where the contrast is essentially hitting. So if I increase the pivot, it's going to hit more of the mid-tones and the highlights. And as you can see, the more I do that, now his face has got is more contrasty. It's a bit more muddier. And if I decrease the pivot, it's going to hit less of the highlights, less of the mid-tones, and it's just really going to be hitting those blacks. And that's kind of what you want to do for more of a digital high-key kind of look. So, so I usually lower the pivot rather than increased pivot because then you're just affecting the blacks and you're just gonna you just really want to get those really rich rich blacks uh, and you don't want to be affecting the skin as much because that keeps the skin nice and bright so i'm just gonna decrease that up to about here so that's before that is after so far so looking good so the next thing we're going to touch is balance and essentially what that means is stretching out the image so much where we have details in the highlights, the mid-tones, and the shadows, which is what all of these areas mean on this graph here. And if you can't find this graph, all you have to do is click on this waveform, go down and press parade. You can see the highlights are kind of almost clipping. We're going to come into gain and we're just going to drop this down 
till about there. There's fine. Bring those backs down. As you can see here, they're a bit lifted. So we're just going to go down to the lift and then just drag that down, making sure you're not clipping those blacks. And then we're just going to bring the gamma up a bit. Just bring those midtones higher. That's kind of good. It might look like things are clipping. However, just use this waveform and you'll be able to see. And then the last thing we're going to do here is saturation. So for saturation, all you're going to do is click on this icon here and you're going to have red up. Then you're going to have red output, green output and blue output. And all you're going to do is just shoot them up to the sky all the way to the top. So <laughs> as you can see, the image is looking lovely, but now you can really get a sense of the white balance and the colors. So as you can see in these midtones and shadows and even in the skin, there's still that magenta hue. So we're going to go to white balance. We're going to go back to our primary wheels and then go to offset and just move that shift that towards green and yellows a little bit. So more towards the greens just to counter that purple magenta and that's good doesn't matter if the skin's a bit red it's skin is <laughs> the skin's supposed to be red um it's just very saturated right now um so let me show you this is without white balance and that is after white balance so as you can see that's a big difference already and it also shows why it's important to do these three steps contrast balance and saturation before you actually get into white balance so now the fun begins we're going to use these three notes which is attached to the layer mixer so as i just said it's very much like photoshop where you have layers so we have this is the top layer this is the middle layer and this is the bottom layer and all we're going to do with these clips is just do some simple masking um the reason why we wanted to push the colors so much and get a really nice balanced image and stretch it out as much as possible um here is so the masking has a lot more you have a lot more information to play with with the masking so you have a much cleaner and nicer um, selection when you do select your colors so we're going to start off with this bottom layer here and we're going to concentrate on the skin so if i click this eyedropper tool make sure this is selected and just click the skin and to see what you've selected you click the magic wand and you'll be here of course it's not going to be perfect as soon as you click it so you're going to click on this um, additional eyedropper tool um, which is here might be different in DaVinci Resolve 17 and then you just click on the skin and just click a bit more of skin just so till the skin is fully fully covered um, so that's good yep that's okay and then what you're going to do is I'm actually just going to increase the softness of this. Now this range shows that's the only hue that's going to be affected in this scene. Same with the saturation where the lower saturation is or the higher saturation. So if you move this, um, if you move the slider upwards, you're going to hit less of those lower saturated areas. And if you move this high, you're going to move attack the more higher saturated areas um, actually move that up so we affect the bottom bit of the chair and same with the luminance attacking more of the darker luminance the more of the darks and then hitting more of the highs once we've got selection that we're happy with um, we'll stick with maybe this it doesn't have to be perfect by the way um then we're just going to go to blur radius which is here and then we're just going to increase that blur radius and then we're going to go to denoise and we're just going to increase the denoise to about 10 11 12 um wherever your preference is this kind of just smoothens out that mask so when you do play back it's not all noisy and grainy and stuff so what we're going to do now is we're just going to zoom into the skin and we're going to go down to the saturation and we're just going to lower that set. Just going to lower that, lower that until that. So as you can see, this was the before and that was the after. And as you can see, only the oranges have been affected. What we're also going to do is just bring a bit of warmth to the skin. So we're just going to push the gamma to the left a bit 
and a bit higher. Like so. It's very subtle, but it just adds a bit more warmth to the skin. Actually, may not even be using this node here. So we're just going to click the 6 and it's going to disable this layer. So we're just going to leave that. But we'll be using this one, which now will be the background layer almost. Um, so now if you look at this, if I increase anything on this um, clip, you can see now the skin tones are not affected because we've already selected the oranges on that initial foreground layer, uh, which is this one. So on this layer, the skin and the oranges will not be affected. Actually, we set that. And then all we're going to do is we're going to drop saturation a little bit. And then we're actually going to go to the gamma and we're going to push that towards the greeny and the blues. It looks a bit more filmy than anything um, because of the colors, but it just gives it that nice bit of punch. Um, so that's before and that's after. As you can see, it's just a bit, a bit nicer. The skin is looking still a bit too red for me. So what you can do to actually change the hue of the skin, you just actually can just go to hue and then just adjust that, maybe go downwards. And as you can see, you can do this by eye or you can use a vector scope, but we're just going to do it with the eye. Um, it's fine. This clip here, we're just going to, I'm just going to move this, start again, just move this downwards a bit. And actually also just the highlights. Just move the highlights a bit more to the bluey side. So that's a before, that's an after. And so far we're at a before and an after. So, so far, so good. A very nice high key commercial look. Next thing we're going to do is global adjustment. So that's going to affect the whole thing. It's going to that's going to affect the whole image and what overall color shift to the whole image. You can use this, um, but I'm kind of happy with the colors at the moment. But what I might do is actually just push this a bit more towards the blues to your overall image. It's the gamma. So that's before. That's an after. Because high high key, more high key commercial looks do you have a lot more blues in them? Um, and it also kind of blue naturally tends to make things look a bit more brighter um, So that's the reason why if you play this back and you'll be able to see Barney just walking around But yeah, it's a really nice look so to finish off with this clip We're gonna go to sharpening and there's two ways that you can sharpen. There's the normal way where you click on this icon here And if you click on this you go to the radius and you just drag this down and we usually take it down to 0.47 so oh open your eyes so that's before no that says before and that is after um, and usually would leave it there so the other way to sharpen is if you go to open effects and you go to beauty you're just going to drag this onto this node and what I found is the reason why I'm doing this is because in films they have this very specific sharpness that's very um, that hits the details really, really nice. And I've never learned this from any YouTube videos or anything that I've watched to learn how to color grade, but picked up by eye when I've just been grading and I used this tool before and I was like, wait, this actually is really, really nice. So what I'm gonna do is, and then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna mount there and I'm just gonna drop the scale. So the lower the number on the scale, the more small the pixel radius is almost on the skin. So you have here, that's just going to affect less pixels and it's going to affect more. Um, so it's going to actually drag this. So as you can see, it gives that very rough looking sharpness, um, which is almost like the high pass tool in Photoshop. I'm just going to leave that about here. I feel like it's a bit more natural than the actual, than, you know, this sharpening tool. So this is before and that's after. It's very subtle. You know, of course, if you want more, you can go here and then reduce the scale a bit more. So these next three clips that were shot in S-Log2 um, use a very similar node tree structure to this clip. That's a lovely error, but the coloring was just a little different. So we're not gonna show from start to finish because that's gonna take so long, but we're just gonna show you what we did differently to achieve these looks. So we'll start off with this look um, which is a very teal and orange look. So if I remove all of this, press control, 
50. This is the contrast and the balance. For some reason, I did it all together. I'm not sure why. And then we have the saturation, the white balance, the layer mix now, um, which is basically the Photoshop nose, let's call them. So we're going to turn on the skin. So what we did was we just desaturated it. Um, we gave it, we increased the hue a bit, and then we just shifted the gamma up towards the orange just a little bit, just to give it a bit more life. So this is the hair. Um, and as you can see, as before, it's quite it's quite yellow and now afterwards it's white the background node essentially as the blacks so now as you can see we have a nice kind of it's a bit faded but a nice contrasty kind of look um, and of course the skin tones are nice and clear which is so so important if we go into this node actually which is a very final node before the actual sharpening is if we turn this on this is where we created this blue kind of look and how we did this was by going into the gain and just pushing that towards the blues and that's literally all we did and we just did we just took away from the scene a bit here by reducing the saturation and then we just added the blues for that what we did was we did one of our favorite things which is log and then if you go down from the primary wheels and you go down to the log wheels you have the shadows and the shadows in the log it only affects the really deep deep blacks and so if i reset this you have just the blacks kind of normal and then if i reduce these blacks you can see it only affects the blacks ah so what we did on this this node here is we just increased the saturation i think for these nodes to have a bit more play with and then this was using the tone curves we use a beauty tool again to do that sharpening to be applied from and you're just gonna go right click and then you're gonna go to apply grade. And that's just gonna apply that exact same grade, but now to this footage. Once again, contrast, saturation, white balance. So we just brought out those oranges just a little bit. And then the second one was just the skin tones. As you can see, it looks kind of yellowy, um, but we'll get to that in a bit. And then the last one was just desaturating you know messing around with those greens and those blues with this next clip we use the hue sat tone curves this which is actually the eye so we just made a little a little mask and we we tracked it along just brighten the eye up and that's before and after this which affects the hat um so that was before and after we just wanted the hat to show come up as black and not blue the log grade for this clip and then for the next clip we just use normal tone curves this was more so of the actual look literally we just drop that gain and although it does look very dark that's the kind of look that we kind of went for and then finally again you have the beauty effects to kind of just before after it just sharpens it up really really nice so yeah that's the tutorial i hope you enjoyed um so yeah, that's the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm sorry if it was super long. And yeah, till uh, till next time. Thank you. So so that so that was a tutorial. So that was a tutorial. Thank you for uh, watching. <laughs> if you managed to get this far, and yeah, have an awesome day. Thank you. The final clip was shot on HLG3 for a car commercial. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is add this node and we're going to try and do this as quickly as possible is just increase that contrast lower that pivot just so you hit that nice spot um, so we're going to press Alt S and use this for the white balance so it's going to pump this down towards the greens just give it more of a bluey tone which is more natural that was before the white balance that was after the white balance um, and then I'm actually just going to pull the clip up a bit just give more details in those shadows it doesn't matter if these whites are clipping, that really doesn't matter, especially in a dark scene like this. Just add add some colour to this. So really simple. So just gonna add some more blues and greens. Move that downwards a bit. And then what looks good here? I feel like moving that towards the more yellowy side. So you just get these lights just pop out a lot more. And these headlights get a bit more life as well. Um so not too much that's kind of nice so far so good what i'm going to do here is logs so we're going to go to log you really want those blacks to be really nice and rich so i'm just going to drop those blacks of course you don't really want to crush them too much so what you can do is using the tone curves here is just lift the black just a tiny bit and then drop that 
log again. Now you have this much cleaner kind of like, it's a very subtle, but it's, it makes all the difference. Um, and then the last thing we'll do is, before we do the sharpening, of course, is go to the open effects or down to glow, drag this on top. And then what I'm actually gonna do is I wanna affect these lights here. I'm gonna increase the shine threshold so that I see those lights being affected and I'm gonna drop that spread downwards. They just have this little bit of glow um, and then I'm just going to drop the brightness down like that. Next thing I'm going to do is just create a masking window. Um, and leave that as that. And the final thing I'm going to do is the sharpness with this. The beauty effects really doesn't matter. This is more than fine. Um, and then you're good to go basically. So that that would be this scene. So if the scene wasn't still, of course, you could um, track this tracking window. Um, but yeah, that's that's how we grade HLG3. And of course, you can do denoise afterwards. Very sorry that this was a super long tutorial, but we hope you did enjoy and hopefully learn some things about how to grade some Sony A7 III 8-bit footage, some S-Log2, some HLG3. But yeah, thank you. If you did enjoy the video, please like, um, maybe subscribe. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you very much.